हेलो व्यूअर्स माय सेल्फ प्रता होप यू आर ऑल वेल दिस इज माय थर्ड वीडियो दिस वाज सपोज्ड टू बी ऑन मैकबेथ एज आई वांटेड टू डू एन एक्ट वाइज क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस ऑफ इट बट आई थॉट इट वुड बी टू टेडियस टू कंटिन्यू ऑन द सेम टॉपिक हेंस फॉर अ चेंज टुडेस वीडियो इज ऑन द ब्रिलियंट पोएम बाय हेनरी लुई विवियन डे रोजियो नेम्ड फ्रीडम टू द स्लेव सो लेट्स बिगिन so first we will recite the poem freedom to the slave how felt he when he first was told a slave he ceased to be how proudly beat his heart when first he knew that he was free to noblest feelings of the soul to glow at once began he knelt no more his thoughts were raised he felt himself a man he looked above the breath of heaven around him freshly blew He smiled exultingly to see, as a wild bird's, as a flew. He looked upon the running stream that underneath him rolled away. Then thought on winds and birds and floods, and cried, "I am free as they." Oh, freedom! There is something dear even in thy very name, that lights the altar of the soul with everlasting flame. Success attends the patriot sword that is unsheathed for thee. and glory to the breast that bleeds bleeds nobody to be free blessed be the generous hand that breaks the chain a tyrant gave and feeling for degraded man gives freedom to the slave so now we will discuss about the title of the poem the title of the poem freedom to the slave simply refers to the freedom given to a slave The poem talks about celebration of freedom in an occasion when one slave attains freedom from his slavery. The psychological reaction is portrayed beautifully to explain the joy and proud imbibed in freedom. Freedom is a birthright of every life in this natural world. Nature itself is free. The blowing wind, the flowing stream, all inspires us to attain freedom. Thus here, the use of the article the refers not to any individual but rather to the whole ideological concept of slavery the poem is a panegyric to freedom hence is a title now we will discuss about the central theme of the poem the ideals of liberty equality and fraternity of the french revolution of 1789 inspired many english poets including the english romantic poets of the 19th century Indian English writers were also influenced by this tradition. Writings of De Rosio was utterly influenced by this praise of freedom against the age-old concept of slavery. This concept becomes alive through the poem Freedom to the Slave, which is a panegyric to freedom. This poem advocates the centrality of freedom in human life and makes us realize how important it is for our own identity. it is not just a physical state of enslavement rather the total subjugation of thoughts beliefs and feelings in this natural world everyone is free human beings due to their inhuman selfishness and greed of exploiting nature and natural beings do not spare even themselves the inevitable result is slavery slavery is not only a physical bondage but also a restriction of mental abilities that could not let individuals to attain their totality the poem was written at a time when the british ruled india thus here freedom from slavery also reflects the urge of our mother india and her sons to be free from this colonial slavery thus this poem glorifies the freedom fighters who shed the last drop of blood to end the tyrannical and tyrannical enslavement glorifying the very concept of freedom so now we will discuss about the critical appreciation of the poem of the indian poets writing in english for the cause of india under the british rule in the early 19th century de rosio is a well known name he was a truly patriotic indian in spirit writing for india's freedom from the british rule He was immensely influenced by the romantic English poets of the 19th century and the ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity together with the natural human right 
of the French Revolution of 1789. He was deeply interested for the cause of freedom and to gain freedom by rejecting slavery. This idea is imbibed in the poem Freedom to the Slave, written in February 1827. The subject matter of the poem is quite characteristic of Derosio's intense love for freedom. According to the footnote given by him, the poem justifies that Derosio was not acquainted with the persons referred to by this poem. Rather, this was an imaginary situation used to exemplify the dearness and importance of freedom to every human being in this nature. Thus, the word the slave refers to the ideological concept of slavery. The poem starts with an imaginary character attaining freedom from enslavement. It expresses the immense pleasure of the very first conscious knowledge of being free. How felt he when he first was told, a slave he sees to be? De Rose in the poem tries to bring out the fact about what freedom means to one who is deprived of it, rather a slave. To him, slavery is not just a physical state of enslavement to another. Freedom is a feeling of a person who when he or she is free from all sorts of restrictions. The poet lays down the feeling of the slave on attaining freedom. He looked much brightened and found proud and joyous to think that he was not a slave anymore. He was inspired with a profound self-honor of becoming really a free man. He knelt no more. His thoughts were raised. He felt himself a man. The slave felt himself as free as the blowing wind, the flowing stream, and the flying bird working at free will. Then thought on winds and birds and floods, and cried, I am free as they. To De Rosio, freedom is very dear to life. It is the central force of our entity that enlightens the blockage of the soul. Oh, freedom! There is something dear even in thy very name. De Rosio advocates that nature does not enslave anyone. Everyone is to be free and joyous. It is the man who with his opportunism and shrewdness makes others his slave to make the most for himself at the cost of others. The poet's extensive love for freedom turns sternly against the tyrant's chain and glorifies the breast that bleeds for freedom. In this word, he perceives the unfailing spirit of a patriot who is ever ready to stand for its sake. The poet also eulogizes those who fight and bleed for the cause of freedom. The conclusion is a clarion call of praise for the champion of freedom. And glory to the breast that bleeds, bleeds nobody to be free. Blessed be the generous hand that breaks the chain a tyrant gave. De Rosio expresses his views on freedom in a simple, appealing and impressive language. His poetic diction is simple and easily convincing. His verses are harmonious enough to draw and charm. The poem Freedom to the Slave on thematic basis is divided into two divisions of 16 lines and 12 lines in iambic meter. It is written in free rhymes. Various, various natural elements are imbibed in the poem, such as the freshly blowing breath of heaven, the wild birds flying high, and the stream running at ease thus suggesting and admiring the closeness between man and nature. So finally, we will discuss about the rhetorical analysis of the poem Freedom to the Slave. In the first four lines of the poem, an anaphora is used to express a strong feeling of freedom. Structurally, the first and the third line of the poem are quite similar. Both of the lines start with the word how and continue to ask about the intense feeling of being free for the first time. Thus, this is an example of parallelism. The repetition of the same word how in these lines is an example of epanaphora. The first sentence is also an example of exclamation, as it expresses the emotional outburst of the person referred to in this poem. By the use of a metaphor, to noblest feelings of the soul, the dearness of freedom to our life is compared to the elevated feeling of the soul. Using the periphrasis, the breath of heaven, the free flow of blowing air is characterized. In the line, 
She smiled exultingly to see as a wild birds as a flew. A simile is used to describe an explicit comparison between the free individual and the birds flying high, indicating the similarity with the use of the word as. In the line, then thought on winds and birds and floods and cried, I am free as they. Another simile is used to mean that the individual is feeling himself equal to the free flow of winds and birds and floods after attaining freedom indicated by the use of the word as. It is also an example of exclamation as it celebrates the emotion of freedom. Using the apostrophe, Oh freedom, there is something dear even in thy very name. The extreme love for freedom is expressed in such a way as if it is present in front of the narrator. In the lights the altar of the soul, the sacredness of the altar is compared to the sacredness of the soul. Thus, this inexplicit similarity is an example of metaphor. In the line, success attends the patriot's sword, success is personified as an attribute of attending something is imposed on the abstract idea success. By using the words patriot sword, the agent soldier is substituted with the instrument sword. It is an example of metonymy, instrument for the agent. In the line, that is unsheathed for thee, thee refers to the freedom for whom the sword is unsheathed. Thus, it is an example of personification. In, add glory to the breast that bleeds, the word breast refers to the man. Thus, it is an example of synecdoche, part for the whole. Another example of synecdoche is found in the words generous hand. Here, generous hand is used to refer to a generous person. A metonymy, the chain a tyrant gave, is used to symbolize slavery. With these simple and elegant use of figures of speech, De Rosio makes the poem lively. So, we have come to the end of this video lesson. Here are the names of some of the books from which I have gathered information. Thank you. Goodbye. Meet you soon.